Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to a new episode of the X Button, Season 3, Episode 41. I'm one of your hosts, Alejandro. With me is the Symbiote himself. Hey, everybody. I'm Paul, and I just ate a giant bowl of spaghetti. <laughs> a, a bit of Symbiote spaghetti. <laughs> I just had to lap it up, you know? Yeah. By the way, like, I hate that. I always called it the Symbiote. The stupid yeah, that's Venom. What I it. Yeah, the stupid Venom movie calls it the symbiote. <laughs> so, I mean, the Venom movie is also not exactly the best authority I know. on <laughs> anything. Yeah, but it's just so funny that that was the first time I heard it being said different, and it caused all confusions. But how are you doing, Paul? You missed last week's episode. I uh, yeah, I seem to have fallen under a rock the last few weeks, and I just keep humbling further and further down into the chasm and uh, every once in a while Alejandro can pull me back out and I say hey everybody I'm alive and then I fall back in again so, yeah because it, uh, it, it's nice to be back yeah because one was for like a wedding one time then the other one was because of the timing the of the recording <laughs> yeah and on the funeral that, that. and the timing and at least my traveling is done until christmas time so yeah. and then by that time we'll be done good. yeah by that yeah. time we'll, we'll we'll have finished the season so so yeah like you're back it's a this is quite a big week for especially this friday i feel feels like the end of the year kind of like a there's still more stuff that's gonna yeah. come out about that's at least for game falling action but yeah. this is the climax yeah this is the climax for like when it comes to like big games after the uh, and now that we can just look back at the freaking phenomenal year that was this year for game releases, not so much for the behind the scenes stuff. But yeah, we're definitely going to talk about those two big things. Uh, but before we do that, this is just a reminder that this is the X Bottom Podcast or Gaming Podcast that posts every Fridays from 2 p.m. onwards, God willing, available in the YouTube channel Escape Gaming, as well as most audio services around the world, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and the like. You can find links in the RSS feed at tinyurl.com slash escape gaming. If you enjoy our show, give us a like and subscribe. And just a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, last week, I did an episode with IGN's Travis Northup, uh, basically IGN's superstar reviewer, the one that reviews most of the stuff in that site currently. I was able to bring him in into the show. Paul met him when we all played Payday 3. Paul couldn't be here uh, for that recording because it was going to be very late at night. And after Travis's recording of the Last Word podcast, his Destiny podcast he does uh, over at the YouTube channel Avantis, uh, that he does every Thursday. So he literally finished that podcast and jumped over here. And it was like... Very, it was going to be very late for Paul, so that's why he, was, he wasn't he was here, because otherwise he would have. And then also, um, today's episode, we're recording it a day early, but it's going to go live at the same time, always on Friday. It's just that we're recording early because tomorrow on Thursday, I'm actually having another uh, guest. His name is uh, Richard Hogue. Uh, we have talked about him sometimes. He's like a lawyer, but he's also very big in gaming circles. He He's over at Season Gaming's Bitcast, Season Gaming, the website that I write for, Uh they do uh, their Sunday podcast. He's one of the, he's he's a panel member of that podcast, and also Travis is in that podcast. So I kind of been like slowly uh, reeling in as guests, like each member of that po podcast. Afterwards, I'm I'm still trying to get my EIC Ains. He says he's gonna do it. He's just busy this month. But yeah, I'm definitely gonna talk about Hogue. Uh, it's very special because he had just survived the stroke. He got a stroke last Dece on December 31st of all days. Like he suffered he, he suffered like a, a big stroke. And then when you hear him and you see him, like he has made like a very miraculous, strong recovery. And uh, he's like, he was very primordial in the uh, Activision Blizzard King uh, acquisition coverage because he's a mergers and acquisitions lawyer. So he was able to like give the layman, give in layman terms as much as he could to explain us the day to day process of that entire 20 month long ordeal, which by the way, thankfully that acquisition's done. It's over. We don't have to talk about it anymore. Activision Blizzard King is now an Xbox studio. Uh, those games eventually are going to come to Game Pass. And he had he has like 50 videos plus, 50 plus videos as he covered that whole ordeal. And then he missed out the tail end because he was in recovery. So, yeah, he was kind enough to say he was going to join in. And I'm going to like interview him, just kind of like talk about how he was able to go from being a mergers and acquisition lawyer into like a very known... Uh, a known quantity when it comes to games coverage. You see him, like, he's invited on many shows. And uh, he's also a big Final Fantasy fan. Uh, Final Fantasy VI just got a birthday, like a 29th birthday. 
he is one of the biggest proponents of that game. So I kind of want to talk to him his history about Final Fantasy VI and what he thinks of that game because I kind of want to talk with someone that has played it, like, that has played it as me as someone that recently bit it twice. So yeah, look forward to that episode this Saturday, kind of like I did the special guest episodes from Season Gaming two weeks ago that I posted as episode 39.5. So enough of that, Paul. We played quite a bit. Thankfully, there's been a lot of... Uh, Kind of like overlap and i kind of want to start with you with that you recently finished assassin's creed mirage i beat it last week and platinumed it also so i still kind of fresh in my mind it's sort of fresh in your mind like what do you think overall because we talked briefly of your initial our initial impressions two weeks ago and now it's done like you finally finished another assassin's creed game in the in the year that it came out feels nice I, right? I don't know what's going on with me i feel like i am uh the weights the weighted yeah. clothing has been taken off of me, and I just started finishing games left and right all of a sudden. Yeah. Uh, my power is too strong. Yeah. Um, also, the games are shorter. This, yeah, the games are yes. shorter this year, so that has helped. Yes, <laughs> that is 100% the actual reason. Um, so, yeah, I I don't want to bury the lead. I really enjoyed it. I, mm -hmm. I think that this is one of those games that is going to hopefully push ubisoft in the right direction compare like what we talked about. Is. i don't think mm -hmm. it's um it's not in our news section i don't think for the it, fact it was, that they sold really well yeah it that was last week it sold it's like That's their right. best their best current gen sale through like currently yeah of like so i i'm not complaining about that at all um because i'm i'm just really glad that a lot of people went out and bought it the fact that they priced it at 50 it was a really big win we for them. showed up my people showed up okay. like i wanted them to even though there were like many uh we were having this discussion two weeks ago with our buddy sebastian about like what this game needed to do and i was always the in the camp that because of the price that's how you knew that ubisoft wasn't being super serious about it this felt like throwing a bone and a test bed of them hearing many complaints especially coming from valhalla it's like please make them shorter bring back and bring it to the to the roots not rpg please and uh Valhalla sold a lot, so by selling a lot, Ubisoft sh didn't need to do this because it was like commercially people spoke of like, look, Valhalla is our best-selling game ever. But they were in such dire straits when it comes to like perception, when it came when, when it came to goodwill, that they needed an optical win. That's why they did this game, and I'm glad people showed up because it's not perfect. This game has problems. The story is, I would borderline say it's atrocious because it relies too much yeah. on you knowing what happened in Valhalla. So it's like, it's not quite a, its own standalone thing, even though it kind of plays out like that. Um, because when you finish that game, like all those weird Black Ops style weirdness happening at the end, uh, like I would, would, I, I kind of sort of spoiled you Valhalla. Like when we talked about this or like what exactly happened, like if I yeah. had not told you that, would you have understood what was even happening? I, I barely understood what was happening even after you told me. Mm -hmm. And it's just, I, I don't drink the Kool-Aid anymore with the Assassin's Creed franchise. I think I actually revisited it in my head, thinking about the entire series as a whole and the past storyline versus the mm -hmm. present one. And I think I'm just still bent out of shape after Assassin's Creed 3. <laughs> I, I cannot... I, I'm really, I truly tried with, uh, what is the modern day lady? Uh, what's uh, Layla. Name? Layla. I, mm -hmm. I started getting a little bit into her storyline in Valhalla where it was like, okay, there's this crazy like um, desert thing and there's a crazy storm and she's meeting with the previous characters mm -hmm. from 2 and Brotherhood. Mm -hmm. um, so I was like kind of trying to get into that because they're clearly trying to connect it again. And you never and, finished Valhalla either, so you didn't even, like, see that through to the end. Well, so. part of that is I was really starting to lose steam on that anyway, because, mm -hmm. I mean, once again, it's just a huge game. And you kind of forget where the characters are at mm -hmm. each time you kind of jump into that. Because, like, when you spend more time on one, it actively sabotages the efforts of the other. That's mm -hmm. the problem. Like, it used to be this... Each time Desmond stepped out of the Animus, he was a little bit more capable because mm -hmm. it was always building to a modern day Assassin's game. Yeah. And that was the whole point. You wanted to see his growth as a character and in actual real movement and everything mm -hmm. and action and stuff. But now it's like it just doesn't really 
connect anymore. And you never played the DLC for Odyssey either that was very Layla heavy. So you also ne never got like too... You didn't see much of future stuff to even start like recapturing the thread again. So I understand. So. And it, that's just it. Like well, the fact that I would have had to either spend more than 100 hours to get the real storyline or yeah. and you only got DLC. one and, and you only got one ending from for odyssey right one like, out of the three out of like four or three yeah it yeah. was it was three because and then you only got the base one just pertaining to the past story because then you didn't mm -hmm. get the, the ending that connects to the future and then you didn't get the one that connects to the franchise in general so it's like you Which have been I have you have been like the door for the record because i do love odyssey enough Mm -hmm. that if I decide to one day go back to Valhalla and continue that storyline and I like it enough and then I want more of that junk food style of a game mm -hmm. one day, Odyssey's right there. 2024 because seems... it is still fun. Yeah, 2024 seems like that kind of year where that would work. So That's what I'm saying. Um, mm -hmm. it's It might take a little bit to get back into it, but if there's a lack of releases or something, I think there's a handful of games that I'm absolutely going to go back to and that odyssey or valhalla are going to be the two of them but anyway that, let me get back mm -hmm. to the subject because we talked about trying to get uh -huh. ourselves on track here uh -huh, with mirage <laughs> um, so mirage the the return to form is absolutely there the mm -hmm. fact that you get this huge hub area um for each of the actual assassinations it's this big complex usually you have to get from one side to the other one of them actually felt like the assassin's creed unity where mm -hmm. they had like the rival uh the revolt outside uh -huh. you had to like jump jump over the wall you had to infiltrate your way in mm -hmm. take out the person in charge or you could like open the doors for people mm -hmm. i decided to try playing it myself because last time it's just an easy mode whenever you get all the npcs to help you um mm -hmm. so i didn't actually utilize any of that but um the throwing knives are phenomenal uh i love the throwing knives and i wish that they were more implemented in other games mm -hmm. um i think the the first game might have been the last time we had real throwing knives we uh, they were in two uh brotherhood and revelations it's just that you also had a crossbow you're right in that you game. just so have better things to to do mm -hmm. but, uh essentially uh, you didn't have the crossbow in the first one that was that was no. the second one i remember now yeah but yeah, even though the right. trail even though the trailer for the first game had him with a crossbow i think it was, about that yeah. every once in a while That's we got bamboozled yeah we got bamboozled oh. <laughs> i remember looking that up and they were like it was just easier to implement the throwing knives because the animation mm -hmm. was too complex for a time i was like all right i get it because you mm -hmm. put it in the two immediately so yeah let me let me get back to on my subject then again um i actually really like the the small skill tree that they had um the mm -hmm. fact that you could build up you could get more than one of those upgrades for the knives it mm -hmm. really changed the way uh like you said you had the one that uh disintegrates, disintegrates. <laughs> i love um, that one <laughs> and the fact that you can um in very well if you focus on it, you can get the one where you can pick up knives that you threw because mm -hmm. it sucks as a concept Running out. until you get that mm -hmm. ability. Mm -hmm. Because you don't really have as many chances to get your ammo back unless you like run around to a shop and buy it or you just happen to find one of those ones lying the around. Yeah, or or, yes. or the chests that you could see like then, if you held might have the thing. one, maybe two, and then you throw them at one or two guys, and then you have to go get it again. So mm -hmm. it's I'm glad that I was able to focus on that, and you told me that there was an ability that let you collect mm -hmm. those because man, I was very happy. Um, the combat really started flowing with me after a while, especially mm -hmm. it was actually more of a blend of Assassin's Creed Unity to mm -hmm. assassin's creed one that i thought it was because it was very much that especially on the elite enemies mm -hmm. where you have to really get your parry, parry timing right or they will mess you up mm -hmm. but by the end of it you were just trucking through enemies um i actively tried to avoid just killing everyone in one big counter move session like i used to back in the day just to mm -hmm. kind of make it feel like there was a little bit more tenseness to it um the stealth really is such an improvement for valhalla oh my goodness i, it's I was not, it's so not happy. even funny right it's, it's not, not even funny even how much better competition yeah how much better it is um the outfits are fantastic uh the fact that it's so easy to just change your color is fantastic mm -hmm. even though you only have one weapon archetype which is your sword and dagger the fact mm -hmm. that you can switch those up and the passives for it are completely different uh the per prince of persia 
a pre-order thing where if you pay uh, it at the right time, it slows time. I like, always I, that, that was my that was my sword and, and knife the entire game. I just love the slow the, the, the slow mo. Glowing mm. sword was immediately like you know how much I love glowing things. So the fact mm -hmm. that you get a sword like that from the beginning was like, all right, I'm done. I don't need to buy anything else. I don't need to go find other swords. Mm -hmm. Um, but. Really, to come full circle with it, uh, yeah, the story was terrible, but everything else was good enough that I was like, I will take another series of Assassin's Creed 3 that is just this mm -hmm. and nothing else um, till the cows come home, essentially. I mean, if you, if you just keep it in the same time period and mm -hmm. just go to different little zones, like, oh, yeah, they're, we're in Italy now, but it's during, like, the Crusades. That's going to be interesting to visit yeah. because you still have all these big places that they went and mm -hmm. you're telling the story of the assassins in their heyday and that is that was something that was so interesting to me the fact that we never really got that has always kind of hurt my soul a little bit mm -hmm. so yeah that i think there's nothing else that i've really forgotten that i wanted to mention on assassin's creed mirage i hope we continue um I'm a little disappointed with the mentor character, and I don't think she actually Russian. did as good yeah. mm -hmm. as uh, people were hyping her up to be, honestly. And she was probably my least favorite character. <laughs> and, but um, unfortunately, he's like the only me she's like the only other memorable character other than Basim. Basim was cool, and her companion I that liked... I forgot her name already. Yeah, so. I forgot her name, but I did yeah. like her as well. I did like uh, Ali. And um, there was like that master dude with the shaved head and the goatee mm -hmm. that had the black and red robes. I liked him. Yeah. <clears throat> but anyway, yeah, it, it's once again like kind of a nothing burger in that department. But the fact that it is the priming point that I can just feel the gun getting cocked, that if this is what they can do again mm -hmm. it, to capture lightning in this bottle twice, I will be back on board for anything assassin's creed and if even if they take all of their other series and filter it through that again because mm -hmm. ubisoft loves homogenization yeah <laughs> i'll take that because it's not yeah. bloated mm -hmm. i yeah so that that's it and i'm not going to get on that soapbox that's another day so anyway like, yeah do you have any other thoughts on it or no, again mirage is just like the fan response has been like really strong i keep always yeah. seeing the tweets uh it's been this has been like the more uh, I just knew this was gonna happen because I just knew that in the critical reception I just knew that there were so many new poster Assassin's Creed fans that came through during the RPG era so of course if they put people reviewing this one it was gonna score lower because it, because of their different warped ex expectations and I'm glad that that in the in the places that matter which is like the the people that really wanted this this game delivered where it mattered. Even though you still feel the remnants of this being a DLC for Valhalla and like the story specifically, you can. That's the, the, that is the skeleton where you know what this was originally. I'm just glad that the overlying game was as strong as it was. That I was left happy. I was like, I felt like I platinumed it in 2025 hours. It was like it felt nice. Be like, I'm done with this. It's like just before it felt like I was losing steam. It was done. And I'm like, yes, this is, it feels really nice. This is why I loved the series before. And I can't wait to see how it continues. The next one that is coming from Assassin's Creed is the Japanese one. And apparently uh, they're re-emphasizing stealth also. So I wonder if like they really got the memo. Uh, even though that game has been in development for a while, but they can easily just be like, no, it's like one hit kills. It's like the, that's the bread and butter of this thing. So, and I hope, I, I hope they keep building on that. And I really want to see the, uh, the witchcraft one, the one for the Holy Roman Empire hex that then is supposed to come afterwards because remember they announced Oh yeah, I forgot time. about that. Yeah, so it was like, um, I, I want to see how that one, because that was more further out, if that one can take even more of the lessons from this one because it's still being cooked. So mm -hmm. definitely like, I feel excited about Assassin's Creed tentatively again, and I hope it keeps going there. But it was, this This needed to be a win for Ubisoft and it really was. So I finished Armor Court 6, Paul. So it was like, I waited. Bless. Yeah, yes. I wait. Yeah, you you beat it close to when it came out. I think you beat it right before Starfield, if I remember correctly. Like you were able to yeah, finish it. Or, really, or, pretty yeah. close to it, I think. Yeah, and uh, because I was I was playing uh, Immortals of Avium and Atlas Fall, and then I had like this, that mentality that I want to play the worst stuff first before and before treating myself with the best stuff afterwards. I'm glad I did. I had this game ready right before, like uh, after I finished Mirage. I was gonna have enough time between Mirage and and uh, and Spider Man Two. And I was like, what could I play? Because I was debating between that and Cyberpunk. But then I was like, 
Cyberpunk is very story heavy that it would kill me to have to drop this in like in the middle of like a story thread. I'd rather just like really devour that one, especially because it's really good. That I was like, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna do Armor Court Six, and I think you said it in our chat, and I agree a hundred percent. Armor Court Six is the biggest surprise of this year. It's the sleeper yeah. hit. It was like, even though you had it in, it was like lower tier in your list when we did the episode in January of like, what were your mm -hmm. most anticipated ones? I had forgotten it was coming out this year because it's so crazy to think that Elden Ring was just last year and they did this one. Um, what a succinct, what a fluid, what a chaotic, and what a satisfying video game. And yes, yes. And, and it's like, the that there's something about Japanese games and their menus and like the and especially the, the, those games that do like the quick bite missions, this game is like when you really get into the flow of like doing each one of these missions that never overstate a welcome, and they only will do that if you screwed up and didn't deck your mech accordingly. Yep. Uh, it was like it, it it just created this feedback loop in my brain of like that was awesome that I I picked the right I I equipped my mech with the right weapon for 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 this moment and being able to like beat this so quickly, uh, it was relentlessly hard at times that Baltius, the, first, the the chapter one boss, I was like banging my head against the wall, almost tearing my hair out because it's like, <laughs> it's kind of insane the the skill check they throw at you at, at the end of chapter one out of five chapters and it wasn't until I figured out, no, just explosions, just I'm gonna just have to do explosions and that's when it all clicked and then I beat I whooped, the, and I whooped that boss's ass in like, two, in like two minutes and then in my typical fashion, I beat some of the harder bosses that I kept hearing were coming like relatively quickly. There was like the spider one that I beat in two tries. There was this, uh, I, uh, the reviewer of Season Gaming one. I was because I was also updating them how I was going. He was like, "Oh, you beat Melania and steroids." It's like the robot uh, in at the end of chapter four that has like a really insane like eagle attack at the end. If you don't, yeah. if, you, if you don't beat it, uh, she is. Easily the hardest boss of that whole game for sure. Yeah, I beat it in four tries. So it yeah. was like, it, so it happened. So it was, it was, it, it was reminding me of like, yeah, I remember like I, I feel like I'm really good at this from software stuff that I can like really. Uh, but also, I played after a patch for also they nerfed Baltios and Baltios still like I wanted to tear my hair up because like I was like who I hurt? Think they nerfed both of them technically. Uh, that really? was the two yeah. that were like the worst and the the prologue uh, chopper mm -hmm. thing. Yeah, the pro but, the, the yeah. prologue chapter thing I beat at day one. Yeah, when I when we right. tried the game, it was like that one was wasn't like, hard. Just people didn't understand how to learn the mechanics out of yeah. that one. Yeah, or more like uh, I feel this is a game that if you play too much like a from software game that you have to like stand back and wait and just try to like attack and wait. I feel this or the the meta and armor core is like full frontal assault. It's like it really is like the way you you have to like try to maximize your DPS and your and your offensive moves as much as you can. Uh, and without letting your enemy even even get a, wee, a whiff of a breath, because that it, that's what makes it more satisfying. Because if, if then you you stand two back, then you're gonna get overwhelmed by so many attacks in that game, and then it's gonna take longer, and then you're not gonna be able to like get closer to them without losing so much health. And I'm really glad that at the very least this game is very gen uh, generous with checkpoints. That it's like it, it, that you're immediately if you reach a boss fight. You're gonna stay in that boss fight if you lose it. If the game allows you to like redeck your mech in that, like if you hit a game over and immediately go back in, that constant feedback loop is like what kept me going. It's like uh, if this was like Bloodborne back in 2015, that every death was a one minute load, I would have like quit. Especially with like the frenetic nature of how quickly some of these fights could have gone. But the visual style of this game, my god, I was like taking so many. It was like. There are there, something happened to the art team of From Software around Elden Ring time that what they do with art with this game is just so mesmerizing. The scale, the color composition, like that penultimate mission where you're like in the skies, in the fiery skies, as you're like fighting the ships before then you go into the final sky to beat the final boss in one of the endings, depending on like the path that you take. And it was like. I could feel some of like the the anime inspiration like in its sleep. I saw some Evangelion and some of like the coloring. I saw some Gundam. It was just so I was mesmerized. Like when I beat it, I was I was glad that I beat it. Uh, uh, I wouldn't have New Game Plus there. I deleted it, but this is one of those games where I'm definitely gonna do that New Game Plus when we finally hit like a, a slow time because it was like 
I just want I, I definitely was like, I want more. This feels so cool. This feels so nice. And man, From Software really is at the peak of their games. This is like, this is high up there in my favorite games this year. And it's probably Pulse number one when I really, really talk about it. Like, probably so. Because yeah. um, essentially, I mean, just the fact that this game is gorgeous, it is smooth, it is easy to pick up and put down. There's some, mm -hmm. like, the longest missions, barring any of the ones where you get stuck at or whatever, are like 20 minutes long. And mm -hmm. at the shortest, there's some of them you can finish in about 15 seconds. Uh, I, that's the, I think, the record that I got to, I, the one that mm -hmm. I remember at least. Yeah. But. I mean, just how easy it is to jump in, jump out, switch a piece around every time you die. The fact, I, it would be very different if you couldn't ch uh, change your assembly mid-mission. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. If you got stuck and you had, like just didn't have a good loadout, I could see that really causing a lot of frustration. That's how yeah. a lot of the old Armored Core games were. But just that one thing. And yeah, like you don't get an S rank if you do it, but you have to one replay a mission. You can't get an S rank on the first time. I am mission anyway. so thankful that that wasn't there immediately because it would have created such a psychological hang up. Yes. So, you know, and, and... It's like, just don't even worry about getting a high rank because you can't mm -hmm. <laughs> just go play the mission, go do exactly. the thing the way you want it to. And then and for a replay value, is, then you just keep going. Yeah. And, then, because and then that's for... <laughs> exactly what happened to me. I played through the game and I was like, all right, I'm fun. I'm, I'm fine. I'm done. I'm going to go play something else. And I was like, you could go back and get some of those S ranks though. And I was like, oh, I could, that yeah. would be fun. <laughs> it's a completely different style of, playing that i've done so far so i mean like then you get into the um the 1v1 and the 3v3 multiplayer modes which uh, i never i, I didn't do the multiplayer yeah i didn't do the multiplayer but imagine the fact that you can do that instead of having to like load up and like imagine comparing to the pvp of previous fromsoft games mm -hmm. where you just have to go to an area that the community knows to go to and then you kind of have to go find some people and then you mm -hmm. have to without voice chat find out how to work together to fight yeah. in a fair way now it's just like hey there's a matchmaking you load up there on the other side of this map go kill them all right mm -hmm. you win congratulations you want to load up again okay let's just keep the ball rolling and this game the understands the, the it understands the snappy like a snappy decision and allowing you to get into everything so quickly is how you stay engaged yes it may be like very add an add design but guess what people many people have a deficit when it comes to tension spans and i feel this game really took that into account with how quickly it can get you back in into literally everything. Those one-on-one -on -one boss fights, that is just a list that you can go. I did them all of them. Apparently, you told me that even more unlock in like New Game Plus from, from there on. And I'm like, those one-on-one -on -one boss fights were just so cool. They were so cool. And that's where I felt boss. When I was like, when I got a few where I combo three rocket launchers and a sword and immediately would delete them in less than 15 seconds. Uh, especially if then I started playing it first and I was like, ah, my loadout is not quite right with this. Uh, it, it's just satisfaction after satisfaction after satisfaction. I can't recommend an Armor Core 6 enough. Uh, if you haven't bought it yet and you were kind of skeptical, uh, Black Friday's around the corner. I'm pretty sure uh, like, that they're, it, came, it came early slash late enough that it will be able to be hit with a, with a nice sale. Definitely get it. It's like it's such such a good game. And I, I get distressed by the idea that it may get shafted by Game of the Year time, especially in the kind of year this was. And, uh, but it sold 2.8 million copies already. So that's more than any Armor Core game has ever sold. And the previous games were profitable because they were made on the cheap. So it's like they're leveraging their popularity that now Armor Core feels respected. This was not a well-reviewed series either. It was like people really didn't get it, but apparently Armor Core, barring a few quality of life improvements that this one has, has always been the same. This has always been the, the calling card for this series. And... That's been like one so some many people that are from soft fans will be like, yes, yeah, like from software is like the one developer that you can always say that always stuck to their guns. It's like their games are always have had the core to them. It's just that people didn't understand it before and they do now. And you gotta think the Souls likes are doing that because it's like I can't think of a better developer currently. So uh we both played uh Paul the Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 beta. Uh I got early I I I got early on it because I was given a code for it. Thank you. Uh mm -hmm. The PR department that from Activision that sent us that, and 
because of that, I'm going to be reviewing this game. I, I got to write a, an impressions piece for my first week with the beta. Uh, Paul uh, got in in the open beta on week two. And uh, I played it, if, I got into like level 15. That's as much as I played because I was playing other stuff. Um, and uh, what do you think? You can read well, my thoughts over at Season Gaming of what I thought of the first week. I say my week two things. Because I'm probably going to say positive things about it, and then the reality is that I played till about rank two and then deleted it. Huh. <laughs> so that I guess sh speaks louder than anything that I'm going to say about it in mm -hmm. uh, in the end. But there's probably a few caveats to it. The reality mm -hmm. is, um, I have to eat crow slightly on a lot of the changes that they made that I were decrying and complaining about at first, and I realize now I don't know if it's um just an updated version of their current engine or what it is but it felt a lot more to akin to 2019's modern warfare remake mm -hmm. than modern warfare 2 did um that was kind of in the end it was really insufferable to go through uh the process on it just didn't feel right the maps were frustrating and that was something that the community echo echoed in which one um, and specifically in modern warfare 2. Oh, okay uh, yeah. you remember like that one mm -hmm map that's just a giant bridge and all that stuff mm -hmm. people were just lighting it up all over the place mm -hmm. um and at the time i think i liked most of most of them minus that and after a while i think i started to agree with them i just wasn't really enjoying it and uh same thing with the way the guns behaved there was just something that didn't feel right about it all you couldn't even save your blueprints and mm -hmm. i don't know if they ever added yeah. that but i just didn't feel like going back yeah, to play it yeah, Modern Warfare 2 was definitely a more casual game because they really nerfed that movement because they really made that game in the feedback of later Modern Warfare 2019 where it got insufferable with people slide canceling and jumping around because they learned those mechanics in Warzone and they implemented the Warzone mindset back into multiplayer. So trying to do normal multiplayer in that 2019 game was like the skill gap was too big. So they built upon on that, but they nerfed movement so heavily in Modern Warfare 2 that you really feel it like going from that one to that one and then from modern warfare 2 to this one it's like modern warfare 3 feels breathless and like how quickly it can go even to the point where they even added an extra mechanic that when you're like sliding your gun like shifts to the mm -hmm. side and, and 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 so you can like keep shooting it obviously with like a penalty felt like titanfall yeah um, no it really it was a titanfall was thing like, oh this isn't call of duty anymore this is titanfall you were just sliding putting your gun to the side and gunning down a hallway of people um so they're leaning into it and on one hand i was really enjoying that side of it because it mm -hmm. felt good everything was kind of nice and drab in the right ways if that makes sense <clears throat> um and then it started to weigh on me a little bit because I was going through regular matches and kind of enjoying myself. And I realized that at my pace, mm -hmm. I was getting about eight kills and I was positive. I wasn't dying as much. I was comfortable. And by the rest of the match, there was like 25 kills mm -hmm. by the point, the same point in the match. Mm -hmm. And I went, OK, so this is either going to be I'm going to kill myself and my hands trying to do that, or mm -hmm. I'm just going to be a burden on every team that I play with. <laughs> I have better things to do with my life. I don't really want to deal with this. Um, and then not to mention that every single one of the the actually good unlocks and cosmetics mm -hmm. are 10 to $20 each. Mm -hmm. um, that was really not interesting to me. The battle pass would be another investment on top of that. Mm -hmm. And at a certain point it was going to be this like all right i see all of this stuff that can sink my time and potentially money and i am not interested in dealing with that or the people that are the community of call of duty frankly i will take i will take a much more chill community at this point in my life thank you yeah <laughs> so in the end i i just deleted it off it was 141 gigs of my life that i needed yeah. to just get rid of and clear space for everything else and then i had so much more fun with the next thing that i would kind of like to talk about yeah. which is the big return of to the halo game, infinite yeah <laughs> to halo infinite mm -hmm. um which season is five, uh, season five season five launched yesterday was it or was it two days i know this week yeah. to, it was like part of yesterday but the battle royale or something i think was today firefight um Fire, well, there is a battle royale that I thought was today as well. I don't think it's quite a battle we'll royale, but it's a different mode. Yeah, we'll, 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 they we'll called check on it that. a battle royale, but yeah, there's a video about it. I'll I'll yeah. look it up later. But 
the most important thing about this is that they added a ton of stuff. They upgraded some things. They gave you a bunch of free things for coming back to it. And like moths to a flame, the old community of 30 something year olds all gathered together, mm-hmm. booted up Halo Infinite for the first time. Extraction. And... I think the mode is called Extraction. Okay. The, mm-hmm. That makes more sense. So, um, yeah, essentially, they added a whole lot of modes and weapons. And I don't think they added weapons, but they had a lot of other stuff anyway. Quality of life. And uh, I loaded it up and just jumped into any of these modes which uh one thing that started to weigh on me back in the day because obviously you used to just start off with your auto rifle mm-hmm. assault rifle excuse me i'm talking like i'm in destiny still in destiny. <laughs> assault rifle and your pistol um and you had to like collect things around the map this is how it goes um and then after a while they did the loadouts which nobody really liked and they got rid of and now it's there's so many modes where you just get a random assortment of weapons Mm -hmm. and that is so fun because even if you get crappy weapons everybody's been dying around you you just pick Mm -hmm. up whatever you want right in front of you you just run around you five of you have rocket launchers going at each other there's vehicles there's explosions going on there's a banshee flying over your head uh you can still take on other enemies uh, not only do those weapons get randomized, but your skill and your grenades get randomized. So that means mm-hmm. sometimes you have a grappling hook, you have your shield, you have the crazy armor, whatever it's called, a uh, repulsor thing. And it is it is chaos and it is the best kind of nonsense. Uh, I immediately slipped back into a comfortable flow. And of course, the kills are so much less unless you're like, I mean, you have Slayer and Ranked and all mm-hmm. that, but I stayed far away from that. I played like Fiesta. Mm-hmm. There was the the Husky, something Husky mode, um, which essentially is randomized weaponry. It's small community-made forge maps. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's like really intimate. There was one that's just literally like a long hallway and you play c- Capture the Flag. And so you just keep blowing each other up until one of the teams is close enough to take the flag and run back as fast as they can. <laughs> and there's like gravity hammers and swords flying everywhere. It is insane. Um, and the fact that you can customize your armor with all of the free stuff that they added because they gave you um, the ability to change the helmet to any armor piece. The fact mm-hmm. that that waited till now is insane and almost yeah. unforgivable. Um, but the fact that I can do it now without any waiting is nice on the back end of that. Uh-huh. So you could just throw on whatever helmet you have, your charms, you have your customization on the weapon or whatever, uh, which is all just visual and cosmetic, but it's fun. Um, it seems like the shop is still pretty predatory on what mm-hmm. is actually given out. I don't like that very much yeah, because um, it's a free to play game. So that's why. Yeah. So like. I get it uh, on a certain angle where it's like, okay, well, you just kind of have to take the good with the bad in some areas. But the fact that they're continuing to add more things and they didn't just give up on it is very nice. Um, They added ray tracing Mm -hmm. to the campaign mode. Mm -hmm. And uh, I still wish that they would add more to the campaign because I did try to play that. And it's, it wasn't hitting the right way. Um, It just Mm -hmm. didn't feel right. It felt soulless. It was like, oh, cool. There's this there's an FOB I can go take and I killed a bunch of enemies and that was all well and good. And I felt nothing at the end of it. So I was like, all right, I don't want to get myself frustrated. So not going to go back into that, but I really want to play that firefight. I want to try the extraction. I want to keep playing regular mode. I was playing miles Morales earlier yesterday. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I want to go back to halo. That tells you a lot. Weird feeling. Yeah. That tells you a lot. What's up? So uh, that's my thoughts. <laughs> no, yeah, but like Halo Infinite to me was like uh, even back in 2021 when we played it. Why that was uh, one of my favorite games that I played that year was not because of the campaign. It was because of its multiplayer. Like the the multiplayer strengths were always there. Like that game was so mechanically sound. It was the best play, the best Halo has ever felt to play. That it was enjoyable in the initial offerings, even though they were missing modes and all that. And, and it was the idea that I said, yeah, this is going to be a live service Halo that's going to supposedly give more and more content at a quick cadence. So to kind of like keep you engaged and all that. And that's kind of like where Halo Infinite hit a brick wall because we learned that they didn't have a live, a live service team in place to be able to have that content rollout going and them releasing that multiplayer like a month early was just them trying to capitalize on them launching uh, 
the multiplayer at the same time as the anniversary of both the original Xbox and the first Halo. So it was like, had that hype. But when that happened, people thought, oh, they did this because they have so much content ready that they might as well. And it's so cooked now. It's like it, the beta was better than Battlefield 2042 and things like that. That it was like, it's so ready, they might as well just release it now. Why not? And then have the campaign ready by the launch of December 8th. The problem was that they decided to hit those anniversaries and then like let the game really fumble almost all of 2022 until this year on season three uh, that came way too late. It was like after like three, like a six or nine month season. It was like, how do you do a season that long? Uh, they had to do like a winter update in between season two to kind of start game. They gave it like a free, uh, a free season pass, uh, a couple maps and all that. And then by season four, they started like really pumping a bunch of maps. They started pumping out the modes. When you enter, the, the menu and you see the list of modes there is now when you compare it yeah. to launch it's like it's night and day they have really really uh buckled and down and like you didn't have to wait long for that many modes uh -huh. says a lot because i mean as we talked about it that was the battlefield issue where you had too uh -huh. many modes and not enough people within all that yeah. the fact that halo keeps it small and intimate almost all the time it is such a good it, it's amazing that i can just queue up and it takes me like 20 seconds maybe to mm -hmm. load into a good match it's gonna yeah. fill me up yeah it's still 12 minutes and thankfully because it still has a healthy player base that returned for this one it's like they it's like yeah. halo with with season five halo infinite has basically like risen up from the ashes because it's like in the multiplayer side that's where they have really buckled down because it, during their calamity they lost their director they lost the uh, the creative lead basically the promise campaign stuff is never gonna happen unfortunately and that is so sad because that campaign was sold on the promise of we're gonna clean up halo 5 but wait until what happens next and we're still waiting and apparently there's like rumors that uh they're building campaign stuff in unreal engine so that's not even the engine that they're uh, using currently that is the proprietary slip space engine that they built this game on so it's like there's apparently some stuff cooking, but it will be like a separate thing now, not just part of Halo Infinite. Like the idea of Halo Infinite being like the platform for single player Halo for the next 10 years died. Yeah. It feels if it, that didn't pan out, but they got their shit together with the multiplayer. And for many people, Halo multiplayer is sometimes like the, the main focus. To me, it's like the 50 and 50. So like I will always remain salty with the campaign because now that we know that it's not going to be updated, playing that campaign feels weird. And it's not as uh, it's not as appealing. Maybe we play co-op one day. Maybe that will make it more fun because that was a big problem. It didn't launch with co-op. So, but even then, it's just knowing that it's just a missed opportunity. That it's like that the great mechanical improvements were not given a worthy campaign with a worthy story, that worthy of its own weight, other than just cleaning up the season finale of the previous game. And this was just kind of like the filler season premiere to just like, yeah, we're going to fix this shit and then we're going to move forward to the new stuff. But uh, the multiplayer, at least when it comes to multiplayer, is like it's totally there. It's like it feels nice. It still feels nice. Uh, it's even gotten even more stable. We had desync issues for a little bit in season two. That's like been fixed. And uh, it feels good that at least for the multiplayer side and how small of a size of a fi the file size is, you, we can always keep that there and have it as kind of like the reliable... It, this feels like a nice one too. If I want to play a multiplayer match that doesn't require too much of an investment other than just skill, I feel Halo Infinite still hits that sweet spot. And, I can't, and I can't wait for Firefight because I love me some PvE and a Firefight with these mechanics, can't wait. Whenever it finally becomes available. Um... You mentioned Miles Morales, like you finally like went back to Miles Morales. You the last time you played Miles Morales was at the launch of the PS5. I remember. Yep. Uh, I recently beat both 2018 and Miles Morales. In fact, I did it because I went over at the single player experience uh, experience at a Sebastian show, and we did two episodes on these uh, on, on these games. That I think one is out today. The other one's gonna be out tomorrow, depending on how his, how the edits went. And it was just basically I was leading up to the release of the new one. And uh, Spider-Man 2018, uh, this is my third time beating it. The first time I ever beat it was in PS4. The second time was when I got my PS5 in 2021 when we had nothing to play. So I was like, I'm gonna, I want to play this again. And uh, this was my third time beating it. And uh, it is a game that its highs remain just as high. But now in the eve of, twin, uh, of the new one and also having just played Miles Morales immediately, it was like... 2018, it's a great game that had so many tiny bits of room. Uh, it had a room for improvement that back in 2018, because we had never gotten a Spider-Man game as as well made and as good as it was, 
that we kind of forgave uh, the pacing issues. We kind of forgave uh, the very uh, repetitive side content or very, very little meaningful actual side missions other than Tombstone. I played all of them again just to kind of confirm it. It's like side mission is the blue triangle because there's side activities in this game. Like, but when it comes to actual side quests, it's like it, it, 2018 was not good. The main story was good. As long as it, you didn't keep switching perspectives, which that game constantly did. And I felt it more because I just mainlined this time. The, the previous time that I, uh, I replayed it, I kind of did it more holistic. I want to do everything. So I feel like I played more times with Spider-Man than I did before. So now playing it mainline, I was like, God damn it. It feels like every other mission, I'm switching perspectives. Here's MJ again. Oh, now this is Miles. I'm back to... I'm back, I, I'm back to Spider-Man. But there is one cool in the middle with MJ when you actually see a stealth section from her perspective as you're like uh, tag teaming with Peter. And that's like, that actually felt really nice. But some of those, like, it, it's like, it's so funny. This game allows you to skip puzzles. Why isn't there a skip MJ and Miles? Because like when you play as Spider-Man, this game is phenomenal. It feels nice playing as him, especially when you're outside. Not in enclosed spaces. In enclosed spaces, uh, mm. it, 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 could, it could get weird sometimes. But um, but it was like, yeah, it's like this is really great. The story is still phenomenal. Uh, even though I do feel that it has a really weird, soggy middle. Uh, as we were recapping the story over at Sebastian Show and we were talking about the plot, very little happens in the middle. A lot happens in act. Basically, three acts: Act One and Three, Killer and, fill, and filled up. The middle one. Bunch of stuff from Act Three could have been peppered in, kind of like the Sinister Six. I feel we we both agreed that it's cool to see them, but they felt dumped into the end of the story. As with the fact that you beat uh, beat, beat each of them, kind of like in pairs, kind of says everything. When it could have been like one at a time, like especially in the middle section, that's all about Mister Negative, and it feels more egregious yep. that they put so much time on Mister Negative to then be thrown as a footnote because the game switches. I almost feel like the reason they did that is because they know all of the rest are such like regularly oh. trodden material that it was yeah, like, there are no oh, quantities. Mr. Negative, we haven't seen that. Like yeah. literally, I didn't know who Mister Negative was until the game got announced, and then I had to go back and do my research and, the and fact read that a he's like brand new day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he wasn't I brand used, but. Yeah. <laughs> I just kind no. of forgot the cliff notes. Yeah, no, basically, he was introduced after One More Day. That horrible story, like, the reboot oh, yeah. post One More Day, that's when uh, he he got introduced. Feast got introduced around that time also in the comics. So I lo it's a, there's a lot of inspiration from that post One More Day story in this game. Mm -hmm. But, yes, this game does a really good job of uh, fleshing out a villain that's not common. It's just that a lot of that, yeah, the middle section of that game is just about that that then he just becomes a footnote in the third act of the story because then we got who is the real villain. Uh, which obviously, if, if you haven't played it, you, you probably already played it. It's Doc Ock. So it's like, and that's kind of like the greatest thing about Spider-Man 2018, that they did the Spider-Man 2 movie, but better, with a Doctor Octopus that you connected more with because you spent more time with him instead of just being a villain that was all, I want to like harness the power of the sun. But, but instead of like he like why he does his technology is because he's losing his motor skills and then he wants to get retribution over Norman Osborn that just keeps screwing him over. So it was like give a villain that when you understand why he's doing stuff, he's kind of relatable. It's like you understand me, he's not right. Like, like the things he's doing, he's not doing it the right way, but you understand kind of like where his hatred comes from. And yeah. that's kind of like the excellence of, of, of this Spider-Man game. It's like it takes tried and true Spider-Man scenarios, but it gives it a little bit more morality that gives him more depth than the usual black and white superhero fair and that remains strong in, in me replaying 2018 as it uh, as it did back then it's just just those little things that i was like yeah it's like this felt more of a slot to play through on top of i was seeing weird glitches which i can confirm paul they are come from 20 from ps4 it's just that we really? didn't notice them yeah we didn't oh. notice them it's like but and again it's like this happened i want to look at beta i was like yeah it's like the PS4 one is like he has all these all this tiny and this is the thing they're so little and everything else was so impressive back then that it's easier to forgive. It's just that mm -hmm. when you go back, it's easier to like notice more of that because even Miles Morales has that. You posted the video of the mute lady. I played the Red Side Quest too, yeah. and she wasn't mute, even though there is a mute character in that game. I thought it was her, which is but, ironic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it's like it, it had it had those little tiny glitches, which I think. Uh, are kind of like side effects of that they actually did pump out these games relatively quick in a way so maybe there were some polish paths that didn't pass but especially in miles morales they had the COVID thing uh yeah they, they had to ship that game from that 
entirely from home, which as good as that game is, like the fact that they were able to do that while working from home is actually kind of impressive. But me moving to Miles Morales, I'm reminded why for me personally, I prefer Miles Morales slightly because this is that that's where I saw Insomniac uh, addressing some feedback when it came to pacing, when it came to uh, not removing you from your main character, kind of having more of a tight feel, the quality of life of the uh, having the phone, where through the phone you can find your crimes, you can find like your activities, and you can find the side quests. It feels in theme of him being a friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, like him, like the game focusing so much on Harlem and a lot of the side content, the blue triangle missions, feeling like normal missions instead of like, hey, dude, uh, college student, uh, what do you need help for? Oh yeah, my, the Mr. Negative thing is, I think they're like over here, over there in the Upper East Side, go there. It's like, that, that was the kind of, uh, that was the kind of side quest that were in 2018, and in Miles Morales, there's the, uh, you find someone's cat, but it takes you through an elaborate mission through, like, a factory and all that. Uh, like, helping Feast, like, getting yeah. to help Feast, that they're getting, they're trying to get evicted by the city during winter time, and then you get to talk with, like, the different people, and how when you complete all the different side quests, you notice that you're, you're helping that because you're honoring Jefferson Davis, the, who, who died in the, in the first game. And provides kind of like little like emotion that it, it's in side quest. And in fact, the the first side quest you play in that game, even though it's kind of mandatory, but it's side quest is the Aaron Davis train section where you meet him. That was a side quest, not a main, not a not, not a main quest. That was in, being introduced to the Spider App oh, side yeah. quest. Yeah, that was not a main quest. That was a side quest. So that was oh, them shoot. like yeah, that was them fleshing out the side quest to feel like main story that if you then just mainline through the main story which is uh miles morales against the tinker it's not as strong that the first game the, the first game is much stronger there are strong moments in that in, in that story especially when it comes to the prowler and miles family and him overcoming and uh and becoming the and emerging as harlem spider-man those are really great moments but they only hit if you've been doing the side stuff because then you know the people that come to your aid where like you just naturally come to your aid because you have been helping them in their in, in, yep. in their town. And it's in those parts that I'm like, man, it's like they were able to do this a year and a half after 2018. That's upward trajectory setting us up for an improved sequel. And that's kind of like what, what Miles Morales was like kind of giving me that. Man, it's like they were able to improve just a little bit. There, imagine now with like the full sequel. That was why that's why I always uh Connected with Miles, um, apart from me as a Latino, I understand Puerto Ricans and the way they do representation in this game is nigh on perfection. It's like it's so respectful. It's not preachy. It's very it, it's very honest to what they're representing. And especially right now at a time where I feel like uh, representation can sometimes be done badly and almost way too in your face. They had yeah. such a ta the, the tact that they approached that in Miles Morales. I was like, man, I love this. And in fact, that is so tighter. It's like, I would rather replay Miles more because it's such a tight package than I would do 2018, even though the story of 2018 overall is better. So I think I was surprised to find out how short Miles Morales was, actually. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Because it was a shorter game. It was um, like, oh, man, I don't even really remember too much of it. Besides the fact that I didn't really like Finn as a villain mm -hmm. as much um and the uh, rock song that's his name uh his whole Krieger, thing was simon like, simon Krieger, I, the the yeah. troy baker it's basically the troy baker character that looks like tougher grays from spider-man 3. <laughs> he just acted like he was like what if mark zuckerberg was a psychopath and it's mm -hmm. like okay this is a little overblown i'm not really getting into these villains mm -hmm. all that much um but i mean the the core of miles himself going about and like you suggested uh mm -hmm. i went out and did all of the side content i did all of the training stuff i did mm -hmm. and it went a lot faster than i thought it was um mm -hmm. i did most of it in a couple of days and i i was kind of surprised when all of a sudden i looked around and went oh shoot i've already i've unlocked all of the mm -hmm. suits i've done all of the crimes i've done all of these collectibles uh there's nothing else but the main story that's weird mm -hmm. um and i did a few of the side missions because i remember the deaf girl and mm -hmm. like one or two of the others i think i did the cat one yeah but the cat one's one of the first ones yeah 
Oh, I did that way later then because I that was one of the last ones I ended up doing during this pl uh, pl playthrough. Excuse me, mm -hmm. but man, um, the the suits were a lot better than I thought they were. Um, I guess I must not have ever like looked up a video on like what suits mm -hmm. are in Miles Morales because man, they had some really cool stuff in there. Yeah. They they were cooking. To me, it's just interest. Yeah, it's interesting thinking about the release timing of this game because it came out during your wedding. And you yes. came back from your wedding, but it wasn't the only game that you were playing. You were also playing Valhalla back then, and then Cyberpunk was coming, and then yep. Cyberpunk was coming. So you that so that was like uh, that was your main focus back then. Right. So yeah, uh, Miles was like my you can holiday see how game. That kind yeah. of uh, that kind of took over very easily on mm -hmm. everything else that I was playing to the point that I probably didn't give Miles Morales its either it's flowers or the time it really deserved and mm -hmm. revisiting it right before uh spider-man 2 i am actually really happy that i did that because now i have a much better understanding of what has happened to this canon mm -hmm. miles uh just the spreading out of some side content alongside the main mission mm -hmm. makes it feel more like oh he had some beef with his old college buddy um and more of like, hey, he's taking on everything that Peter used to do, which is one reason why I loved Peter for so long. Mm -hmm. But I think it's also time where we give him the Superman treatment. We let Peter age a little bit. Let mm -hmm. him go take on some other bigger issues and then let Miles be the, the true apprentice, friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Yeah. It's like, um, I really like that they managed to find the balance between Spider-Man is New York and Manhattan and miles is harlem really? like that's his focus and that really made it like all right they don't step on each other's toes mm -hmm. i'm really glad that in all canon peter is super appreciative of miles no matter what yeah uh, how dorky they are together the ba the banter with hologram mm -hmm. peter and miles is so funny the fact that peter is uh, impersonating both the criminals miles uh -huh. fights and the the captured people and he's like please save me spider-man and miles mm -hmm. is like man this dude is a dork i love this guy yeah um, it's, like, it's, it's like, again adorable. the strength the strength of this game is like they i feel like when it comes to writing both these games are master classes like yeah. they just captured the essence and the voice of these characters at the best they can it's like they're these become the my favorite like interpretations of this character and uh and to me specifically why i even take more to miles is that because I played so many Spider-Man, I've seen so many Peter Parker stuff from the movies, the cartoons, and all yeah. of that. There is just something very novel about like seeing things through Miles' perspective. It just feel, it feels refreshing, and this hit me even more, especially right now in a year where I've been like, how long ago was I like F Marvel, and like yeah. screw super weird stuff and 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 all that, and then me replaying Miles Morales, I had a smile plaster in my face. Literally, I yeah. was like, wow. I was like. I'm tired of maybe the old and or, or the tried and true because I've experienced so much superhero stuff over my entire life. But Miles is something kind of more fresher, and I'm not as well versed on his story, other than right. just like the Spider Verse movie. So that kind of freshness was like, huh, this is. It felt cool. it felt good. I was like, I had a smile. Like the snowy New York, the vibe, the, the immaculate vibes of the snowy New York are so cool. Mm -hmm. Especially at night when then you go through like Times Square or, or Harlem when it's like mm -hmm. the Christmas Reds and all that. Yeah, it's uh, magical. I yeah, it's you. like it's like Miles Morales is an excellent game, and that and Miles more than ever was like more than prep me for the game that yeah. the reviews came out on Monday. Let's not beat around the bush. Press X. Nope. For some news. Story number one, Paul Marvel's Spider-Man 2 Review Roundup. The embargo for Insomniac's follow-up to their smash hit from 2018 lifted this past Monday. Currently averaging a 90 on Metacritic after 129 recorded reviews and a 91 on OpenCritic after 106 reviews, Marvel Spider-Man 2 is the studio's best-reviewed game on aggregation since their 2004 critical smash hit, Ratchet & Clank Up Your Arsenal. Here are some excerpts. Uh, Video Games Chronicles Jordan Miller gives it a 5 out of 5, saying Spider-Man is an incredibly competent sequel and one of the 2023's best. Incredibly fun to play, fast-paced, and full of heart. 
It takes the best of Spider-Man lore and the best of Insomniac's penchant for excellent gameplay sequences and combines them for arguably the best Marvel game ever. Uh, game Informer's Matt Miller, the editor-in-chief, gives it a 9.5, and he writes, Insomniac has nailed the, that rarest of video game development feats. The team has landed a trilogy of games that all stand strong on their own merits, but unite into a sweeping saga made better by experiencing it in its entirety. Uh, EC Allies' own Michael Huber gives it a 9 out of 10, and he says, Spider-Man 2 is an excellent sequel that smartly builds on the solid foundation set in the previous installments. The web wings are a fun addition to traversal, while combat and stealth have been improved and refined with easier access to gadgets and the new web lines. Swapping between Peter and Miles is not only fun for gameplay variety, but creates a convincing sense of individuality as they go off and do their own things. After a three-year wait, Insomniac has delivered a definitive Spider-Man yet again. Uh, the Washington Post's Gene Park uh, gives it a 3.5 stars out of 4, which uh, averages to an 8.8, .8, and he says, Now in its third game, Insomniac is executing a formula that doesn't feel quite as fresh as 2018, but it's one that's still exciting as it is solid. Even if the story felt familiar, its threats point to more exciting idea ideas in the future. And because it supplants the first two games in play, Marvel Spider-Man 2 is easily the most fun superhero game ever made. In this case, the familiar is most welcome. Forrest Faltasi gives it an 8.5 out of 10, and he says, For fans of the first game, or Spider-Man, or action games in general, Spider-Man 2 is an easy recommendation. There are about 5 dozen teasers and easter eggs by the end, so I'm sure we're in for more, whether that's another mild-sized adventure or another sequel down the road. But for now, yes, this is all the spider action you need for a good long while. IGN uh, gives it an 8 out of 10, with reviewer Simon Carty saying, Marvel Spider-Man 2 delivers Insomniac's best tale yet. And despite its open world falling short, it's a reliably fun superhero power trip. GameSpot's Jordan Rami, which he can screw himself, uh, gives it an 8 out of 10. And he says, All in all, Marvel Spider-Man 2 may largely give us more of what we played in Insomniac's previous Spider-Man games. But that winning formula is still so damn fun that it really doesn't matter. The story's exploration of loneliness is fantastic, creating gripping new narratives for the two heroes, Peter and Miles, as well as the two main villains, Craven and Venom. Spider-Man 2 unites all four characters in a riveting narrative through line you'll want to see all the way through, and has the gameplay hooks to keep you engaged the whole ride. And finally, uh, from notable sites, Eurogamer gives it a 4 out, 4 out of 5, 4 stars out of 5, equaling to an 8 out of 10, and the reviewer Chris Taspel says, At once it's a little simple and a little overstuffed, Marvel Spider-Man 2 is still, above all, a game of immense charm and fluid freeform style. So, how you feel about this review, Paul? So, it's like, first off, it's like, this also, uh, the same case as what, kind of what happened with Starfield, where many of the big sides landed in 8 or, like, in the lower side, but then others kind of, like, lifted up. It just kind of ended up in the more higher side of things compared to Starfield, but this is Insomniac's first, like, 90-plus game, and me, I have been very clear... I, we had long conversation in our chat sometimes of kind of like sometimes yep. reviews are always cool to see a snapshot of what people think and all that, but it shouldn't be like the be all and all thing. I found it interesting in my For You page. I saw so many Insomniac developers tweeting how happy they were of like breaking a, breaking a 90. And what it, realized, what it hit me was that I feel Insomniac has been kind of like a giving on fair rap of like, their games are always so consistently great, but they're not the greatest studio or something like that. Like, trying to downplay the fact that they're so consistently good. Especially in a generation where this is their fourth game. Already. If you if you want to include the Spider-Man Remastered. Like, but even then, that's three games three years into the generation in a single system. When the, the rest of the studios in their portfolio of Sony have only gone once or not even at all. And they're able to put out all of that. And the games that they have put out uh, this generation have gotten consistently better and better. From Miles Morales to Rift Apart, which we played this year, to now this. Like, this feels like, uh, unless you get an asshole that gives it... Because there's no mixed reviews also. I, I made a note on that before we started recording that. This was at a 91 on Metacritic. And, uh, and another review, more reviews came in and that like dropped it to a 90. I'm like... Please, God, I hope there's no one that does it in bad faith that puts like a mix or bad review that just tanks uh, their their uh, their average. But I feel that by the time that you see that there's like 129 reviews and that's how the average consensus is, it's like I feel they've earned it. Like in this case, like they earn they they've earned uh, kind of like the praise because they sometimes don't get the uh, the the praise that they deserve. For my money, they're currently Sony's best team. 
like currently. Even as someone yeah. that loved God of War Ragnarok last year, this year feeling iffy about it, whether if I really loved it or not, or even me that I love the almighty Naughty Dog that it's kind of like in dire straits currently with have, only having given us a remaster and a remake is like you can't speak like against the facts and on top of that their games sell a lot like people are gonna buy playstations for this damn game and see and and, and seeing this reception i'm like it really feels like the kind of sequel i was hoping or crossing fingers it was gonna be i have heard some concerning parts uh that were not in these reviews apparently mj sections are back uh, so I'm like, ah, that means, yeah, it's like, we're gonna switch perspectives, but the fact that you get to Spider-Man, that should help with that perspective switching and all that. Mm -hmm. so I wanted to jump in as well. The fact that all of these reviewers haven't mentioned that as, like, a large negative. Uh -huh. The fact that we barely heard about it from maybe one person is maybe... Mm -hmm. To me, that speaks as, yeah, they're there, but they're probably so, like, lessened. It's probably just... You know, those moments where they force you to breathe and go, okay, slow down from the Spider-Man insanity. Let's give you a little bit something lower down. I mean, mm -hmm. we've seen that MJ was driving a motorcycle. Maybe she's yeah. not just doing like stealth stuff. Um, mm -hmm. But I, in the end, I, I'm just super excited about this. I think the only reason this wasn't higher is because a lot of people were for some reason expecting more and mm -hmm. i say that with huge air quotes yeah but there's a certain point where that's almost an unrealistic expectation somebody uh summed it up really good to me they said there's a reason why the yakuza series is so well beloved and he uses the same city yeah. every single time G it Park does said not that. matter mm -hmm. yeah that's thank you uh very much because that i couldn't remember who it was and i knew it was somebody that you would know mm -hmm. so yeah gene park saying uh, it, there's a reason because it's not the focus on the environment that you're swinging through it's the people you're helping mm -hmm. that, that's the point uh, you're you are the defender of this zone why are you going to be yeah. surprised when it's like oh it's still new york oh mm -hmm. it's snore and it's like yeah. all right buddy you're missing the point here and all of look this at miles stuff, look at miles morales same city but look how they like decorated that city for it to still feel like it's something even though it was the same map yeah um and it almost doesn't matter because after a while you don't focus on every single building i know there are some people that do but the fact that most of those new yorks are like they're painstakingly created but they're made so that they're fun to traverse not just like oh it's every single building in manhattan actually recreated not like the one-to-one -one recreation of paris in the 1790s that ubisoft hit us with mm -hmm. so it's like they made it fo so that it's fun to traverse still and it doesn't matter that it's like, hey, this new area of the map, I remember a quote. They said the new area of the map seems like it's going to lead to something new. It's just more to cover. And I was like, mm -hmm. buddy, you are missing the whole point of the fact yeah. that we can now swing in another zone mm -hmm. outside of Manhattan. And they were like, oh, we thought we could do more stuff out there. It's like more of the same. It's like, yes, it's a freaking Spider-Man game. What yeah. do you want? Yeah, at a, at a certain people? point, uh, yeah, the, at a certain point, it's like something it just is what it is. And uh, sometimes it's unfairly maligned. Sometimes it's not. Like, I do feel like um, like so the more common complaint I heard was like the open world activities that they feel very similar to the last game. I'm really hoping that at the very least, this is building on side quests from Miles and they don't feel like... Uh, 2018s because miles just really improved that i heard that uh miles's app is also back that was like such a nice uh quality of life improvement for that but i think more importantly because i've been seeing so many videos and all that this feels like it's gonna be like the next true showcase for the ps5 this is a ps5 only game and the way some of the things that they're showing erroneously through launch trailers unfortunately and, and one thing that i don't want to mention here that gene park because i'm in a discord with him he was pissed that so many so many things were shown in that launch trailer because he was like man they did so well because they showed so much of the 2018 beforehand we saw the two big set pieces of that game were in demos before the game came out and they had done better at like hiding it and then the launch trailer just like blew the load open so if you haven't watched the launch tra trailer that happened last friday which is pretty hype all, uh, all things sincere like if you're in just wait like just literally wait just play like this episode is going live when the episode when the game comes out just play the game like the game's available now, just play it. Like don't don't spoil yourself. And if, and I heard that they really stepped up when it comes to visuals and things like that. And uh, I saw some. The, do you see? You see videos of the fast travel, right? Yep. It's insane. The crazy switch. Um, mm -hmm. 
Uh, the fact that the holding button takes longer than the actual transition is insane mm -hmm. to me. Um, yeah. I, I, the fact that I'm never going to use it is mm -hmm. the other side of this. Even, even now, I don't, I did not fast mm -hmm. travel a single time playing as Miles Morales. Even if I had, if I was on the highest north point and mm -hmm. my mission was at the furthest south point, I would much rather just swing for the fun of it, yeah. fight crime on the way. It's, it's just, just such great it's traversal. Yeah, it's just a literally, literally just great traversals. And now they had the wingsuit twitch. Uh, I know you're a little iffy on, but I keep hearing about this damn wingsuit that is like really cool. I even saw a review, they didn't even put it here, saying that uh, Spider Man 2 is the greatest Superman game ever made. That's how good it feels to like fly with the wingsuit. So I'm like, I'm gonna feel it. Yeah, can't wait to feel it out and see yeah. if it's re if it yeah, really is. I know I was nervous about it, but I'm hoping that I was wrong in my fear there and that it's actually really good i think i've just so many games started implementing wingsuits as a concept that i'm like mm -hmm. okay i'm tired of this mm -hmm. like yeah okay you want to have an easy way for the character to just kind of a pose and you be able to move around the the world mm -hmm. but it, it sounds like they're doing a really good job with it so i want to give them the benefit of the doubt yeah and we're get to play tomorrow so it's literally this close now so well, wait, I'm glad that it... what time tomorrow uh the normal uh you're oh you're 12 my 10. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> I get to play it at my 10 on Thursday. So I'll is. probably, I'll be like done with doing the Hogue episode and uh, then edit both this show and that and then just jump into play that and game. I'll get into it at some point Friday, I guess. <laughs> yeah. You could call in sick, maybe. <laughs> Can't. Yeah. I wish. <laughs> but so that wasn't the only uh, review embargo that lifted this one this other one lifted today Paul story number two Super Mario Bros. Wonder review roundup uh, the other big game that comes out on Friday the review embargo for the latest 2D entry for Nintendo celebrated mascot lifted today sporting an average of 93 on Metacritic after 80 recorded reviews and an average of 92 on, Met on Open Critic after 51 recorded reviews this gives Nintendo three of the highest reviewed games on the aggreg aggregator side this year next to Metroid Prime Remaster and Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, and makes it a triumphant return for 2D Mario after a decade-plus absence. The last 2D Mario came out in 2012, so it's been 11 years since that one. And yes, they re-released that game on Switch, but still, like, it's been a decade, decade since a new one. <laughs> so, here are the excerpts. Uh, BGC gives it a 5 out of 5, uh, also 10, uh, and... Editor-in-Chief Andy Robinson says, Inventive and full of heart, with a tight design and striking presentation, Super Mario Bros. Wonder is undoubtedly the plumber's most memorable outing in 2D since the 1990s. Eurogamer also gives it a 5 out of 5, and, and reviewer Christian Donlan says, An endless cascade of ideas in a game that takes Mario to some wonderfully strange places. GameScop, uh, GameSpot's Steve Watts gives, gives it a 9. Uh... And reviewer says this is the rightful successor to Super Mario World, and hopefully will serve as a touchstone for 2D Mario going forward. IGN's Ryan McCaffrey says, uh, and also gives it a nine. Super Mario Bros. Wonder looks and plays like the true next step for 2D Mario platformers. Wonder effects change each stage in both surprising and delightful ways. The Flower Kingdom takes for a, a vibrant and refreshing change of pace, and Elephant Mario steals the show. And Forbes, uh, Ollie Barber gives it an 8.5 out of 10, uh, with a. Uh, with the reviewers saying, overall, though, Super Mario Wonder is an excellent 2D platformer with excellent level design, polished visuals, and mad Wonderflower set pieces. It's not my favorite Super Mario game in recent years, but it's definitely worth checking out. So, I'm feasting because uh, I was just as equally excited as I was for this game as I was with Spider-Man. In fact, I was more excited for this game than I was Spider-Man, like when we did our what our most anticipated games for the fall. And uh, this is going to be the game that I'm going to be playing if I'm feeling a semblance of steam losing in spider-man in spider-man 2 or just kind of like playing it both because it's like it's just a platformer and i just love that i had i didn't put it that way i just kind of skipped it in what we've been playing i've been like playing new super mario bros u again just to kind of like get into the get into the flow of like 2d mario and man i just love 2d mario so much um uh, this is not in our arrangement thing so i was able to buy it thanks to all the points i'd saved over the last year so it came out at like nice. 44 dollars so i was like yes and uh yeah, I can't believe it. Can you believe that Nintendo has Tears of the Kingdom 96? That's kind of like a game of the year, like Front Runner. The Metroid Prime Remaster reviewed so incredibly well as a reminder of how great Metroid Prime was back then, how how great it mostly holds up this year. And now, like, this Mario game that was randomly announced at the end of the Nintendo Direct on June now is, like, high up there as like, one of the best reviewed things of this year. It's like, when Nintendo cooks, man, it's like, they're, they're, they're unstoppable right now. Like, they're 
they truly are uh, it's it's really impressive honestly um there's there's a part of me that wishes that i had the money to jump in on it because i really do want to play wonder especially mm -hmm. after hearing all of the really good stuff about it mm -hmm. but um I christmas know, I sounds play... great for you or like and black friday or like, like I'm november hoping that at least we have at least a little bit of a sale because you know some of the nintendo games do go on a slight sale but the fact that this just is coming out Mm -hmm. I don't know if we're gonna get that for this one. I mean, we might. We'll get it for like Metroid. We'll get it yeah. for Tears of the Kingdom. I don't know if they're gonna drop that on Wonder, honestly. Especially but... just recently, it's in on the year of the Mario movie that broke billions of dollars. So they know Mario yeah. is like a hot commodity right now. <laughs> so. yeah. Um, but I, I just hope that the financial success of this causes them to continue like a whole new like phase of oh this is this style yeah. and it's all new yeah. 2d mario stuff like it's, sign me up and isn't it crazy that it really was 11 years since the last time they attempted a 2d it's like they may yeah. iterate but they really make you wait for it it's like it's like yes we get a lot of sequels that sometimes are like um are criticized for being iterated like we obviously just read about that with spider-man but uh 2d mario has been like yes re-releases can sometimes warp the perception of how often we get them or when was the last time we got them but it really was 11 years yeah metroid dread was 19 years between the last like official 2d entry uh something is five to six years before like 3d entries also look even from birth of the wild to tears of the kingdom that was like a six year wait also uh so it's just, like they i feel nintendo really knows the value of like really holding back like really holding and then just like release the host at a very specific point and then when they release it do it in a way that at least from when it comes to gameplay and design always impresses when it comes to like critical reception and things like that so yeah it's like it's again effortlessly another 90 plus for him it's like it's so it's so crazy like you imagine insomniac poor insomniac almost two decades to try to break a, a 90 after the, the after after arsenal mm -hmm. and like nintendo just like quickly you just like you, you just did that so <laughs> yes but there's all, obviously there's also the people that said that there's nintendo bias and i kind of agree with that in some in, 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 in some way but there is a reason they're the they're the grandfathers of gaming it's like they just understand fun in gameplay also so yeah, great reviews for that one. Can't wait to play them. I, and this one I'm going to play with my family. I showed them. Why I bought it myself? Because I didn't know if I was going to buy it immediately. I showed the trailer to my mom and my dad. And they're like, when Aww. is this When is this coming out? I was like, oh, yeah, it comes out this Friday. Are you getting it? I was like, I am now. So, because it was fun because they are like yeah. old school Nintendo people. So, Final story, Paul. Let's uh, give some praise to the Xbox side today because we got MPD. Uh, NPD is for... Uh, or slash their con results today, actually. So, the story by Tom Ivan and VGC, Starfield held off Mortal Kombat 1 to top US software sales in September. According to Sircana, formerly NPD Group analyst Matt Piscatella, Starfield is the seventh best-selling game of 2023 year-to-date based on its launch month dollar sales, which were highest on PC, which makes sense because there's no Game Pass. Well, technically there's PC Game Pass, but a lot of people play on Steam, and this game was huge on Steam. Uh, Bethesda's RPG, which was also made available on Microsoft's Game Pass subscription service at launch, held off competition for Mortal Kombat 1, which debuted at a number two in the software chart and became the eighth best-selling game of 2023 year-to-date. By the way, like Mortal Kombat always by the way always launches as a number one it's mortal kombat is that huge the fighting launch at number two sells out says a lot of how much starfield sold uh, yeah. ea sports football club 24 which is formerly known as fifa came in at number three on the chart which parenthesis i guess people really figured out that fifa no longer was fifa they caught on and they made this damn game sell but yeah keep Moving on. Uh, according to Sir Khan, it's so double-digit percentage growth across both unit and dollar sales compared to FIFA 23, 23's September 2022 launch month. It's all more than FIFA. <laughs> it's already the 14th best-selling game Amazing. of 2023 year to date. Uh, people really love their soccer, I tell you. Uh, mm -hmm. Other other new entries on last month's software chart included Payday 3 at number 5. Woohoo! Uh, because that was on Game Pass too, but it also sold on the other ones. And I mean, they they need that for Payday Three to continue its like ten year cycle. Yeah, that's big for them. Exactly, especially if it's not just a Game Pass that's holding them holding them up. Uh, yeah. NBA NBA Two K Twenty Four at number six. Hell yeah, they usually are, they at the top, so people are losing steam on Two K and their money grabbing practices that they are like microtransactions and season passes on top of season passes. They were, they were trying to pull. I saw Angry Joe rant about it. I was like, this is insane 
absolutely <laughs> insane how much they're trying to monetize a yearly NBA game. And then the Crew Motor Fest debuted at number seven. So, uh, on the hardware front, PS5 remained the best selling console platform in both unit and dollar sales last month, with Xbox Series X and S ranking second in both measures. Uh, then uh, for, the, for the first nine months of 2023, Sony's console leads the hardware market across both unit and dollar sales. Total US consumer spending on game hardware content and accessories in September was up 10% year over year to $4.5 billion. Year to date consumer spending is up 2% at $39.4 billion. So that obviously more games have come out in 2023, obviously more spending was going to happen despite inflation. I'm looking at the list, Paul, because it's like just there's images there. I want to see what else was there in that list. Uh, mm -hmm. Armor over it right now. Yeah, Armor Core came in at number eight that, that month after it debuted at a number two. That was a really good start for um, mm -hmm. for Armor Core, and then because the number one was NFL the, the previous month, obviously because yeah, of the start of the other matter. Yeah. That. The fact that an Armored Core game was only beat by literally right. Madden. Yeah. <laughs> what in the world? Right. Um, and uh, a couple other comments that I was just thinking of off the top mm -hmm. of my head, of course, um, I don't refer to Hogwarts Legacy, uh, but what Hogwarts I was... is holding Hogwarts like last month it was number five. It's like consistently, it's, it's 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 crazy how much like the Harry Potter name still holds strong, and the game yeah, is still good, good and, and that and, and that's a good game also. So. Mm -hmm. uh, then I actually completely forgot about it. Um, I'm impressed to see Rainbow Six Siege here. Yeah, um, that is, it still charts. Like, I the did Rainbow not Six... mention it, but I returned to it with my old group of friends. That used are they to still be playing there. it? And um, the we took a solid break. I think we might have played once in the entire time that I've been mm -hmm. living in New uh, North Carolina, and uh, returned like three times the last week, and that was pretty solid. So good for them. Yeah, uh, they're Siege is good. Their... Yeah, Siege yeah. is good. Uh, it's wild, wacky, and hilarious uh, now. It's it's essentially Fortnite because you have Master Chief, mm -hmm. you have yeah. <laughs> uh, crazy outfits. It is not at all the, the sim shooter that it once was, yeah. but I, there's a part of me that's like, ah, this is just fun yeah. anyway. So, yeah, good to me, that, Yeah, but... to me, what's interesting and kind of sort of pleases me in a way because I'm seeing that its grasp is like being released in from like just, just casual gamers like... Call of Duty, Black Ops, Cold War, and Vanguard were like consistently yeah. two and three, like that. Crazy. Modern Warfare Two is like even though it came in at number four, number ten spot, like that bottom of like the top ten in in, in, in like monthly sales, has been it, that has been like the position of that game. That it, it, you understand why they decided to move on from Modern Warfare Two so quickly into a Modern Warfare Three because of that because it's staying power even though it still sells, it's not as huge as the other ones and. This is all happening right as now it, it now becomes an active uh, a Microsoft owned subsidiary. So it makes me wonder if they bought it right at the moment of their low, if that's gonna like climb it up and the game pass thing of it all. And let's see if that a lot of people really decide to go for the game pass route for that game moving forward. But yeah, like that says a lot that so many games have been able to sell more than like Call of Duty. That makes me so happy. So so happy. It's like this is a solid list and and for Starfield is like the fact that it coming in and becoming number one really says a lot about the power of Bethesda. This is like, I think I, I've come down to saying that Starfield was like a disappointment for me, probably. Like, uh, like I've been wondering, is it, it going to be like an honorable mention when we do our game of the year? But it's like it drops sharply for me. It's like, I don't feel as high on it, but you cannot deny the numbers. It's like, this game resonated hard. I see it resonate with people, especially now that... The, do you see the, you said the Mandalorian mods, right? From a PC version, people yep. like, yes, yeah, like, that is what's going to keep this game alive a lot because it's like, it, it, just, it then becomes Minecraft. The mod scene of this game just becomes Minecraft for so many up and coming developers. And they already uh, implemented quality of life with the mods, which to me is kind of unacceptable. That wasn't even implemented in Beth by, by Bethesda itself. But that's kind of like the toolbox that made Skyrim and Fallout for so long, like, such a long. Uh, long tail for those games and uh if they're already doing that with that mod support officially being featured which is not even in consoles it's like can you imagine when that happens i feel starfield will be a fun one to revisit like as it gets more stable maybe kind of like redfall they eventually patch 60 frames because technically they said they, they could do it in console it's just that it was so unstable that they're like nah, we want to lock it so if it can be like a more consistent mm -hmm. experience i'm like maybe that could bring in bring me back because i still have the vanguard quest that i haven't completed 
So I, I completed everything else. I didn't. I got so sour on what the new game plus was that I was like, nah, I don't want to do this because it feels like a disrespect of my time. But I want, I want to try to hold on to the hour ten to hour fifty when I was really in love with this game before it just. I mean, have you beat it yet? Which one again? Starfield. No. <laughs> are you are you gonna attempt to? Unless everything else that I want to play or am currently playing drops off or like I finish it all and it's like mm -hmm. mid December and I have nothing better to do, I don't think I will. It says a lot. It really yeah. it, it really says a lot. It's kinda of unfortunate, but massive success for them. Like it it really is. It's like it hit what it needed to hit. Is it a critical success? It's not, but tell that to the millions of people who are still playing it. They're still having fun with it. <laughs> so, and with that poll, that's just a, it was a short new, new stint for this week. Um, read me the release dates for the week of October 22nd to October 28th. All right. We have City Skylines. The fact that both of those are plural kills me. Yeah. City right. Skylines City 2. Skylines, yeah. <laughs> For PC on October 24th. And by the way, uh, by, buyer, and buyer beware, even though that's supposed to launch on Game Pass, they already announced that it's launching with performance issues, which is hilarious. That they're, So I'm like, why don't you just delay it? But, well, it's coming It's coming do, on that day. Do we know when their console edition is supposed to happen? Next year. It was supposed to come Next out this year, year and, they, and they pushed it, but they still want to push ahead. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, and anyway, on to the next. Just Dance 2024, PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X and S, and Switch on October 24th. Uh, another comment, shout out to Just Dance, just kind of staying in their lane, not getting yeah. into any beef, just enjoying their oh, yes. yearly release. Like, good for them, honestly. It's still, in my money, one of the greatest workout games, especially with when the when the music is bopping. It's really good. Yeah, when you're feeling it, I agree. Uh, then we have the incredible Metal Gear Solid Master Collection Volume 1 on PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X and S, Switch, and PC on October 24th. Then we have the Lord of the Rings Return to Moria, PlayStation 5, PC, <laughs> uh, October 24th. Did you have some yeah. comments there for that last one? Metal Gear, I'm like, it's really happening next week, right? Yep. I want it. Four, four <laughs> yeah. days. Yeah, I, I really want it. But... Oh, Lord. <laughs> no, um, but... Yeah, so Mor Return to Moria. That's the, mm -hmm. the dwarves that are trapped in Moria and that whole thing. Yeah, it's like a really card game. Much. I think it's like a card game. Is that what it is? Okay. Yeah. I don't know why I thought it was going to be like a sim or something like that. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, it it looks it looks charming. I remember that much. Mm -hmm. uh, Stray Souls for PlayStation Five, Xbox Series X and S, PlayStation Four, Xbox One, and PC on October twenty fifth. Yeah, it's like a kind Minecraft game, by the way. The Return to Moria is the uh, Welcome to the Lord of the Rings: Return to Moria, the only survival crafting video game set in the fourth age of Middle Earth. That was announced in one of Keeley's things. So. Fourth age. That's right. Yeah. This is like one of the first times they're actually going past where the the story uh -huh. ended because uh -huh. everybody is obsessed with adapting the previous stuff so that was mm -hmm. like oh that's weird that that is one of the only examples of that anyway <laughs> battle cakes on pc on october 26th dave the diver on switch october 26th frog detective the entire mystery playstation 5 xbox series x and s playstation 4 xbox one switch on october 26th that is a weird October 26th, uh, like, through line. You have right, yeah. Dessert, Divers, uh. and Frog Detectors. What a... <laughs> um, Ghostbusters Rise of the Ghost Lord. PlayStation VR 2 and Quest on October 26th. Ghost Runner 2 on PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X and S, and PC on October 26th. Minako's Night Market on PlayStation 5, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One on October 26th. Alan Wake 2... PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X and S and PC on October 27th. EA Sports, UFC 5, PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X and S, October 27th. Yeah. Alejandro, it's... remind me, didn't you say, that, were we getting Alan Wake 2 possibly? I, I, signed, I signed up for that one uh, to, okay. to do the review, and they talked with PR. We still don't know yet, so crossing fingers on that one, kind of like how we did with, uh, with Mirage. Yeah, the Metal Gear, right. yeah, the Metal Gear Collection is <laughs> the one. The, the Metal Gear Collection, I'm like, yeah, it's finally, it's finally there. It's like, I want to see them again. Like being able to play it on modern hard, play Metal Gear One outside on, on modern hardware. I also seen two and three. Um, yeah, I think there's like, a part of me that's a little afraid that it's not going to hold up for me. Oh yeah, because you don't have the like it, it will for me. It definitely yeah. won't for you because like, uh, 
I have nostalgia for Metal Gear 1, but you played Metal Gear Solid 2 recently on Xbox. So I you did. know it. I enjoyed that a lot more. Um, 2 and 3 I have somewhat of a nostalgia for, even though my you first them. example of it was the 360 remakes of them and not like yeah. the originals. But yeah, they're, but they're, it's like, they, they're, they're literally the same game, just exactly. HD. So. so you played, you've seen those games, essentially. So. Yes. I just got it. It's finally here. Like Metal Gear Solid, it's finally in modern hardware, and even in platforms that are weird for to know that they're gonna be there, like in the Switch. But yeah, Alan Wake Two is like all eyes are on it because the preview for that, the previews for that game were like massively glowing. glowing. So it's like people say this, just like Armor Core Six was like a sleeper for us. People are saying that Alan Wake Two will be that, like based on what they play. Let's see if it holds. So, hmm. in fingers for that code, and with that, Paul. That brings the end to this week's episode of The X Bottom. Where can people find you? As always, y'all can find me on Twitter slash X at Dork of Art. Um, I, I break games and I sometimes post pictures um, that I draw. Drawings, yeah. that's a better you haven't, Yeah, that. you haven't done drawing for a <laughs> while, but I can't wait for you to like go back to that. Yeah, I do a lot in my little journal um, manually and just because... At work, I can't have a digital tablet and say, hey, what are you doing? Uh, uh, working, totally. Um, but yeah. if I have my journal in front of me and I'm uh. scratching away <laughs> in it, they're just, it's work. But then in the end, I have really cool, intricate drawings. But those are harder to take pictures of. Um, mm -hmm. So that's why I haven't really done that. Anyway, yeah, where can they find you? They can find me on the Twitter slash X at A underscore Dorsegobia. They can find me on a thread slash Instagram at Alejandro Segovia 93 and my written content at both the season, at seasongaming.com to read some of my current reviews and also my personal website, thecriticalcorner.com, which I haven't written for a while, almost all year because I was doing season gaming, but I may do a return article there for Spider-Man 2 since currently I'm not reviewing that for season gaming, but I definitely want to say my piece because I did review the original on Critical Corner back in 2018, so it would be like a fun full circle moment, so... Time for some games, Paul. Thank you for being here. And uh, thank you so much to our listeners. So we love you so much. Like we, I received so much great feedback for the Travis episode last week. I saw some, especially on audio, those numbers bumped up with our guests. So can't wait to see that keep climbing up as we reach the end of this year and end of season three of the X-Button. So uh, if you like what you listened or watched, give us a like, subscribe, leave a comment. Let us know what you like, what you didn't like. Like We would like to hear more feedback with that. And uh and then go play some games. Uh, go play Spider-Man since you, if you're listening to this on Friday. Uh, and also play Mario if you don't have a PlayStation, but you also have a Wii. Or play both. Like Because if, you have, if you're a real gamer, you get to play everything. And you're not a weird console partisan that cares too much about like crapping on someone else's fun. So, and uh, touch some grass if you want. Exercise. Enjoy the fall. And press X to play. Good night, everybody. Hasta la vista, baby.